I'm live. All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the last noon session. Hope everybody is having an amazing day. It's been an amazing morning, I know, for us. Um, I've just been seeing the on the Facebook group so many amazing stories of God's faithfulness and uh, just throughout, man, God is good in the midst of uncertainty, in the midst of different things happening in our country and uh, whatever. God is faithful. God is so faithful. And I, I'm telling you, I believe as we begin to just praise, as we step, I mean, it couldn't get more relevant to do this three-day challenge in the midst of all this, then I don't know what else would be more relevant. This is powerful. And so I am so encouraged, so enthused by what God is doing uh, through this through this three-day challenge. And, uh, you know, the, the past couple of days, we've just had several, several stories of people, people reaching out saying, man, you know, I've, I was headed into such a rough day began feeling down and all this kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden just to, took a couple minutes and started putting this into practice. And, you know, all of a sudden they, they just say, I felt joy fill my soul. And I'm reading directly from it. And my entire attitude shifted. And, you know, that attitude shifting isn't just for you to feel good. It's because God wants to shift atmospheres. He's shifting your attitude to shift atmospheres. So God is, is moving. God is about to touch more and more people as we just steward this word, steward what God's saying in the, in the word of God. I, got, I, I wasn't able to get, jump on the call last night because I was, I was sharing at a church at Auburn Heights Church in Phoenix City. And, and um, it was one of the things I, I told him, I said, right now we're in a three-day challenge and our, it's all based around the premise that there's so much more for us in Christ Jesus. What if we took scriptures like 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, 18, and just really said, this isn't just a, a mundane, you know, pray without ceasing, sounds good, that's a great goal, give thanks in all circumstances, that's a great goal, uh, but, you know, that that that's not really practical. That is practical. This is real life. What if we took scriptures like, uh, you know, get be joyful always or, or, uh, or what's the one in Romans eight, you know, or James says, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many times, of many kinds, you know, what if we really took that and trials, we actually began giving thanks for, you know, because we know God is taking that trial and working it for us, you know, all things work together for the good of those who love him. So anyway, I am so, so excited because today we have Pastor Paul on the line. And we are couldn't be more blessed. I am so excited to have him. He is he has been such a a mentor for me. I mean, since day one for me, <laughs> since since day one, and, and day one means before I was even saved. Uh, he's been a, a champion in my life. Somebody who's really just um, poured into me, called out the gold, and constantly encouraged me and and and, and pushed me forward. So I am so excited. He also leads. Uh, actually, a, a couple different churches in in the uh, all part of Evangel Temple um, in this area, and so we're just enthused to have him. We are talking about giving thanks in all circumstances, guys. I, I just would encourage you go if you haven't seen the morning message, go check that out um, or rewatch it, look at it, and really uh, just dive into that. Post on the Facebook group, encourage somebody else. One of the things I said was actually find people in your life that and and look at their life and say what am i thankful for about them and call it out go even give thanks for other people for the people that god's put in your life and encourage them with that um i believe things will shake and we we raise up world changers through that but anyway pastor paul i'm so glad to have you on and um i just i just really honor you and say thank you it's so exciting to have you today Amen. Jonathan, yeah. good to be here. And uh, yeah. I do want to say, guys, it's great to join you today. I am so excited to get to share. But I, I want to say first, Jonathan, I'm just very proud of what you're doing with Spirit and Life University. It's an incredible thing, this three-day challenge. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I got to watch Jonathan grow up. 
and 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 come to the Lord as an adult, and uh, just just being able to watch that is such a blessing. His mother is a faithful assistant, and uh, his family's been dear to Pam and I uh, for a long, long time. So what you're doing there uh, also would take the city. I enjoyed Andrew's message yesterday. Just so excited to watch both these young men just rise up in Christ and, and take their place of taking the gospel to those who need to hear it so desperately. And today, it's, I think, what a, a timely, timely message as we watch our nation divided and all the turmoil that's going on is that this, this idea of rejoicing always, praying continually, and giving thanks in all circumstances is actually what God wants from us. And so today, it's, it's just an honor to be able to take that, that verse 18 and talk about what it means to give thanks in all circumstances. And so I, I'm just going to uh, look in the word. And, and really, there's really a big point that I think that needs to be made uh, right up front. And, and that is that Paul is not saying that we should give thanks for all circumstances. All right. That's not what he's saying. It's a big difference. He's saying we should give, God wants us to give thanks in all circumstances. All right. That's a big difference. And we can do that because we know that God is sovereign over all of our circumstances, everything. Now we may not understand what happens or why it happens, but we trust the Lord with all of our heart. And that's the reason it kind of brings me to the second thing. That's why we can give thanks in all circumstances, because we know that God is faithful. We know he's sovereign. And we, even though we don't understand him, we know that we can trust him. Now, I want to take a, a moment here just to kind of unpack that a little bit, because we've been through a really tough season uh, this year with COVID and, and all the social unrest and and people have lost loved ones. I just, I just got back from the hospital a few hours ago. One of our faithful, faithful saints went to be with the Lord suddenly. And, and the way hospitals are now, you can't get to people. And so I just, I think about all the people this year that have, have really struggled and have faced things in such isolation. And so I, I really want you to understand, we're not just nonchalantly saying, give thanks in all circumstances and just be joyful. What we're saying is there's a deep understanding and a trust of God that enables you to still thank him even when you're going through a really, really hard, hard time. Maybe the dark night of the soul for your life, you can still thank him. And here's one of the keys I right, to thanking him. It's this. One of the keys I have found is remember. Just remember back, if you're going through that dark night of the soul or you're going through a really hard time, just begin to think back on all the things the Lord has already done for you. Just remember his faithfulness. Just write that down and just start jotting things down because when you're in that really dark time or really tough time, just start jotting things down. Just, just think about all the Lord has provided for you in times, uh, miraculously when he provided. Maybe, maybe you'll remember a time the Lord healed you when you were sick, maybe I, I'll tell you another really great one that I, that really helps me. I just start thinking about the people that God has brought into my life. My mother, my father, my wife, my children, my grandchild. <laughs> and, and I'll even turn on a video of little Benny, you know, and just watch it. I'm thinking, you know what, when all the world's going crazy, I want to go back to the blessings God has provided and, and through people. And, and just think too, I think about, the fact that I'm saved by grace through faith. I, I know I have a home and it's not here. I'm just thinking about not only what he's already done, but what's coming. And so that begins to just open the door for Thanksgiving to flow. It's a natural door opener, just remembering what he's done. I often say around here, if the Lord doesn't do another thing, if he says, Paul Thomas, that's it. I'm not going to do another thing for you. I have more than enough to praise him for eternity. I have more than enough. I, I, he doesn't have to do another thing. I can praise him for eternity. He's already done enough for that. So as you think about that, I think it will help you. And it, it also reminds me of the trap we can get in if we don't open that door to remember what the Lord has done. 
uh, what we begin to do, if we focus on our problems or focus on our lack or begin to focus on all the things that are going wrong, we can actually develop what I call an ungrateful spirit, a spirit of ingratitude. And uh, like the 10 lepers, you remember Jesus, when they begged Jesus to, to heal them, Jesus healed all 10, but only one came back and thanked him. And he said, where are all the others? Uh, and, and it was noted that, that the nine others had a spirit of ingratitude. I mean, leprosy was a death sentence back then. And here Jesus has healed them and only one came back. I think that's a lesson for us to watch out and be warned. Don't fall into that spirit of ingratitude. It's a, it's a sinful spirit where we just literally get so self-focused on what's going on in our little world that we forget the blessings of the Lord. And actually, I believe Jesus followers ought to be the most thankful people on the planet. We really should be. We should be known for that. We should be known. Oh, there, there goes those people that are just so thankful for everything. I think that should be the thing that defines us in this time. And so I just want to encourage you, begin to open that door. And, and really it kind of brings me to uh, what I, I heard Billy Graham say one time. He said, nothing turns us into bitter, selfish, dissatisfied people more quickly than an ungrateful heart. And nothing will do more to restore contentment and the joy of our salvation than a true spirit of thankfulness. He's saying that spirit of thankfulness will overcome that spirit of ingratitude every time if we'll just begin to open the door to thanking the Lord for what he's done. I like what David wrote in Psalm 9. I, if I can think of one person who's known for being a thankful person, it's King David. And he wrote this in Psalm 9. He says, I will... I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. What a powerful statement. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you, and I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. I tell you, when you begin to have that attitude, I will praise the Lord. I will give thanks. I'm not going to let anything that happens in this world rob me of, of that thankfulness I have with the Lord. And it kind of brings me to the third point. And that's this, is that when we choose, when we choose as a mindset and, a, and what I'll call a heart set, if we choose to give thanks in all circumstances, it actually opens the door for the Lord to do miraculous things in our life. It really is. It just opens the door. And not only in our lives, but in other people's lives. And, and I really want to talk about what Paul and Silas went through in Acts 16, because if there was anybody who had a reason to stop and, and not give thanks at that time, it would have been Paul and Silas. Paul had, had gone, he had actually taken the gospel to a new continent when he crossed the Aegean Sea and went into, uh, in, into this new continent when he, when he went into Philippi. And uh, so, so it's a huge thing. But when they get to Philippi, Paul cast this demon out of this young slave girl and the owners raised a ruckus. They were arrested and they were, get this, they were beaten severely. Now they were, they were arrested unjustly. They were beaten, not just a light beating, but a, they were beaten within inches of their life. They were beaten severely. They were stripped for the first thing. So they were humiliated in public. They were beaten almost to death. Then they were thrown into the, what they called the inner cell. That was the highly guarded cell and put in stocks and chains, all right? Now imagine that. You've been unjustly arrested. You've been beaten and now you're thrown into jail and, and, and they're there and they have a decision to make. And I don't know who made the choice. I have a feeling one of them just started humming a hymn, a song of praise. And it says that around midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray and praise the Lord. And there's a note there in that scripture. It said the other prisoners were listening. Note that. <laughs> See, when you and I decide to give thanks in all circumstances, other people hear us. They hear what we say. They hear our tone of voice. They also hear us when we're ungrateful. So that's powerful what happens. And when we begin to praise the Lord, especially in dire, dire circumstances, 
other people took notice. But I want you to know the most important person that heard it that night was the Lord. And, and because Paul and Silas chose to praise him during this time, God did something miraculous. He literally shook the earth so hard that all the cell doors flew open and all the chains came off of the prisoners. But get this, the prisoners didn't run out of the jail. They ran into the inner part where Paul and Silas were. They ran to them. It was like they were saying, you know what? I want what those guys have. Something is in them. I want, they were drawn to them. And I believe Paul and Silas began to lead those guys to the Lord. Well, the jailer, here's the commotion and comes in and he sees all the other cells empty. So he's going to fall on his sword. And Paul says, no, no, don't. We're all here. And so he comes in and he asks a peculiar question. This is why I believe Paul and Silas were leading the other prisoners to the Lord. He said, what must I do to be saved? Well, who said anything about being saved? Paul and Silas were leading those guys to the Lord. They were getting saved. And now the jailer says, I want to be saved. So Paul and Silas led the jailer and all of his family to the Lord. And it said, they rejoiced. Now I go back, all that happened. And see guys, I believe this is what's going to make heaven so incredible. We're going to meet all those guys that were in that jail in Philippi. We're going to meet the jailer one day and they're going to share their story. And then we're going to find out the impact from that point on of all the families and all the generations that were changed because of one decision, two men decided we're going to praise the Lord instead of gripe and complain and cry and wallow in our misery. We're just going to praise God. That one decision literally changed eternity. And we're going to, we're going to hear story after story after story when we get there because Paul and Silas chose to give thanks in all circumstances. See, this is what I love about this word. It wasn't just a great idea. Paul had done this. He had chosen to give thanks and God moved miraculously. You want, you want miracles to start happening in your life and in your family's life and those around you? Begin to thank God even though you're going through hell on earth, if you will, because when you do that, it opens the door for God to do the miraculous in your life. I, I just love that. I love what Spurgeon said. I'm going to change his quote a little bit. And so I'm going to call it mine and Spurgeon's quote. All right. Because here's what he said. He said, when joy in prayer, and I'm going to change that word joy to praise because it means the same thing. So when prayer, when praise and prayer are married, their firstborn child is gratitude. When praise and prayer are married, their firstborn child is gratitude. Paul and Silas were praying and praising and it, and it developed the spirit of gratitude. So the prisoners ran to them instead of away. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I think this is so powerful guys, because I believe with all my heart that so many people in this world are held prisoner to their feelings and what's happening to them. And they don't know the one true God who can allow you to give praise no matter what you're going through. The one true God that can give you joy in the midst of pain. The one true God who can deliver you from your feelings and you go on what you know, not how you feel. And see, they don't know that. And so when Paul and Silas did this powerful thing, all those guys were set free and it, and it changed their life forever. And I just want to encourage you when we decide, as we kind of review, when we decide we're going to give thanks in all circumstances, not for, but in, because we know that God is sovereign and powerful and in control. We may not understand him. I say it all the time. I don't understand you, Lord, but I trust you with all my heart. And because of that, I can thank you in all circumstances. And when I do, it opens the door for him to do miraculous things. And I just want to kind of leave you with, with Psalm 100, because I believe this is truly God's will for you and I today. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth, no matter who's elected, no matter what 
is going on around. Shout for joy, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know, not just think, but know that the Lord is God. He is sovereign. It is he who made us and we are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise and give thanks to him. Praise his name for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You know, if there's one thing I want to teach my children and my grandchildren is this. The Lord is faithful through all generations so you can surely give thanks to him in all circumstances. And I, I love this. I know it's what God wants for you today. He wants that for me today. I believe he wants it for every person in this world to be able to say, I thank you, Lord. I praise you and I thank you right where I'm at. I'm not going to wait till it gets better. I'm going to thank you right now, right where I'm at. And that definitely, definitely opens the door for him to work in us. So I pray that's a blessing to you today. Jonathan, again, thank you for allowing me to share. And I just pray that the Lord will, will bless those who have heard today. Hallelujah. And, and, and thank you so much. I, I just feel like there was such a powerful, um, just even impartation, just a, a, a thing that um, you spoke and it activates things in people. And it, even for myself, I feel like it activated, it caused my spirit to, to rise up. Amen. And uh, would you just pray over us? I mean, I just want to, I just want us just to get in a place of receiving because this is, this is such a powerful word. And, you know, one of the things you said was when you choose to give thanks in all circumstances, it opens the door for the miraculous in your life. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of this election, in the midst of all that's happening, you know, there is a powerful place when you say, I tr choose to trust God. Amen. I choose to give thanks. I choose to believe that God, you know, nobody has authority except for which God has given them. And I choose to believe that God can take all things and work it for our good. And, and there's a powerful place I just feel like we're in right here. And we need to receive for the sake of many around us. So, yeah, if you just pray for us. Lord, thank you. We thank you right now, Lord. And again, I'll say it. If you don't do another thing, we yes. have more than enough to thank you for oh, eternity. Oh, yes, God. You are so good. Your love endures forever. You are faithful. And even as we walk through a fiery trial, Lord, yes. our hearts are full of gratitude, Lord, because we know you know all things, Lord. And we, we can thank you right now, even for what you're going to do in the future, Lord. We don't know how things are going to work out, but with confidence, we can bring our needs to you with thanksgiving because we trust you, Lord. You're faithful. You know all things. Oh, yeah. Lord, you love us like no one else, Lord. And you're able to provide, Lord. You know when we, even when we ask for something we don't need, Lord, you already know that. Yes. So you're able to give us what we truly need, Lord, not just what we want. And we, we just praise you for that, Lord, because we know, we do know. It's, it's like Paul said, we know in our hearts that in all things, you work for the good of those who love you yes. and are called according to your purpose, <laughs> oh. Lord. We are your children, the sheep of your pastor. We will follow our shepherd. And even though we will walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will not be afraid, Lord. We will not fear because you are with us, Lord. You're right there. You yes. promised you'd never leave us or forsake us. And we just walk by faith, Lord, and not by sight. We know there's turmoil. We know our nation's divided. Yet we give you praise, sovereign God, Lord. Yes, God. You are the King of Kings and yes, the Lord of Lords, and you will provide Hallelujah. according to your riches Thank and you, glory. God. And we just bless you for Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. We praise yes. you for it. As a matter of fact, Lord, I go ahead and praise you for the outcome of all elections. Yes. And I pray you'll put a spirit yes. of 
unity within your people that we will yeah. lift our leaders up and pray for them, whoever they may be. We'll pray for their families and we'll ask that they would hear from your spirit, Lord, Ooh. as they make decisions that affect our nation. Yes, God. And our trust is in you, Lord. Yes. You alone. Hallelujah. Glory. We glory. We look ahead, Lord, and we Thank do not you. wring our hands, but we ring the doorbell of heaven and we say, here we are, Lord. We're yes. your children. And we trust you with all of our heart in Jesus' name. Come Amen. on. Yes. Yes. And I just I just feel the anointing. I feel the Lord saying that some of you have been pressing in for a miracle. And yes. what he he doesn't Pastor Paul just felt what the Holy Spirit told him to say, and I felt like some of you have been pressing in for a miracle in these past couple of days. And today is about the day of thanksgiving for your request that's already done in that's Jesus' right. name. Today is about that day. It was rejoice. We step into his courts with praise, and then we step into prayer, and we submit our requests, but then we give thanks Yes. for what God is doing and has done in our lives. So I just declare in Jesus' name a spirit of thanksgiving yes. over every person for the answered prayer in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for every single person. Miracles are taking place in yes. Jesus' name. Even right now, bodies are being healed. Even right now, mental illnesses are being healed. Yes. Depression's leaving in Jesus' name. Even yes. right now, people are discovering more purpose in life in Jesus' name. Even right now, yes. your power is coming over your people to begin radically thanking you and begin praising you because you are the Lord and you are the one who fights our battles in yes. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you. Hallelujah. So, guys, please share what maybe the Lord spoke during this time. Just if you're in that place right now, just feel free to cut off and just keep pressing into that place. But I want to encourage you to share with somebody what God is doing right now. Share with them about the answered prayer. Share with them. It says, believe that you have it and it shall be done. So, so share with somebody. Tell them what God's doing for you. And let's press in together. And we're believing for this nation. We're believing for a greater move of God than ever before right now. And it's not out of reach. We are believing for it and it will come to pass in Jesus name. Lord. So thank you, Pastor Paul. Thank you for being here. Uh, we love you. Is there any announcements or anything you want to share with the, with everybody or? No, I just, okay. uh, you know, coming up on Thanksgiving, this is a really good season to be thankful. So thanks yeah. again, Jonathan, for letting me join praying for everybody that's taking part in Spirit and Life University. Just praying the Lord blesses you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Y'all be blessed. Have a great day.